Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 16th, 2018. Let me get some house cleaning out of the way as far as the TDD report and the summer. A lot of times I do take a summer break. Sometimes I take the entire summer off and don't do any TDD reports. But what I think I will do this year is I'm just going to go to an every two week schedule. Uh, probably like in July and August and September I will do the second and the fourth Saturdays of the month unless something really significant in the science realm happens I may adjust that schedule slightly so in that case this report will be the last one for June because this will be the third one and then I'll do two in July, two in August and two in September with like I said a little bit of adjustment for any kind of special events happening so on to the articles that I got sent in. This was from my friend John B., my truck driving friend from Life Science. Lost NASA tapes show humans sort of caused global warming on the moon, too. Uh, this is not really the same thing as global warming on the Earth, which, as you know, the moon doesn't really have much of an atmosphere to even have. But what they were wondering why was that the temperature, they wondered why the temperature went up 4 degrees Fahrenheit or 2 degrees centigrade on the moon right after the uh, astronauts first landed and what could possibly cause that. Well, they also noticed that the astronauts had walked around on the moon and kicking up the dust and stuff like that. They were revealing some of the darker dust underneath, which was a really darker, much darker color. So obviously with the sun hitting the moon and hitting a darker color, you would think that, you know, being the case. So what they do is they took the archives and they were also looking for lost tapes. I don't know if you remember I talked about it maybe several years ago that there were some of the tapes from some of the stuff that took place on the different moon landings that were lost. Well, they found some of those and took some of the data for those and the different temperature reading and stuff like that, too. So after eight years of doing this research and everything like that, they uh, think now they have the explanation for the temperature increase in it. The other thing about it, too, is they, in one part of the article, they say it may have increased the temperature of the whole surface of the moon, but I don't think so. I think it's more that these probes in the actual areas that picked up, the darker areas that actually picked up more sunlight and more infrared radiation is what is causing the heating, and it may be a localized phenomenon, really. So, um, And also what they said, too, is just the way that they placed the probes. And the thing about these probes, too, is the probes are at different depths. So the, some of these probes are buried down below the surface of the moon, and those probes showed no difference or increase in temperature at all. The ones closer to the surface showed the temperature increase. So that's what gave them the hint that, you know, kicking up all that dark soil was probably what was the main cause. But they also said that because of the fact of disturbing the soil around these temperature probes created darker areas, too, it could be even more localized than the probes themselves, maybe one degree out of the two degrees that the probe is having a higher temperature is just in the localized darker area. So they don't get into that so much, but it's still a pretty interesting read article, uh, article to read about what they uh, discovered and the way basically a lot of the article is just about tracking down the data is what it's about and how a lot of times even a case like NASA you try to keep track of data and stuff like that and it may be scattered all over the place in fact I think one of the biggest treasure troves of data they found was somewhere in Maryland so yeah Sweetland uh, Suitland or Sweetland Maryland was where they found a bunch in the Washington National Records Center so as usual down in the description box below will be the links to all of these articles and next up from Popular Science, this AI can see people through walls, and here's how. Uh, what they did was, and I've, I've talked about another project that DARPA had, and they mentioned on here too, that DARPA using, I think it was just using simply infrared detectors, were able to detect people in houses and moving around in what areas they were basically in. But it was basically just blobs of infrared shapes, so you really didn't see a lot of detail, and you certainly couldn't detect who the person was and not necessarily whether they were sitting or standing. You could just maybe say that there were three people in the room at the most. But with these uh, radio signals, and these are Wi-Fi type of radio signals and not very powerful either, evidently they can go right through the wall, but they bounce off of human beings because we have so much water in our body and they come back out through the walls. And what they did using artificial learning is they wanted to see if they could train artificial intelligences to determine and compare pictures of the actual people without a wall in front of them, just the actual visual representations of these people, and then compare it to the radio waves that were being bounced back, and then see if they could obscure these people with a wall, and could this actual type of learning, artificial intelligence learning system, be able to interpret the, the limited data enough to be able to tell where these people were and what was going on, and evidently 
this artificial learning system kind of semi-taught itself and it actually can see stick figures of people. It can see your arms, your legs, elbows, joints. It can see these people whether they're walking, standing, sitting down. And if the person has a certain type of way they walk, it can even distinguish a person by their gait. So if you walk or move in a particular way, this program can actually identify who the person is besides that. So uh, yeah, the system works because the radio waves can pretend. Well, this is what I just told you. Now the challenge is how do you interpret it? So. Uh, that's where the AI comes into play, specifically a machine learning tool called a neural network. And then they talk about the, just what I told you about too, about how that they, they weren't sure that this machine could actually learn this or get enough information from the radio waves and compare it with the visual part to actually get that good. But after uh, uh, they did, it actually did get that good. So, yeah, so um, researchers have already started using the system in a small study with Parkinson's patients by putting these devices in the patient's homes they could monitor their movements in a comfortable setting without using cameras so in other words they would just see stick figures but the person would still have a limited amount of privacy too so in other words if you had a a, a parent or a, maybe a nursing home with elderly patients you could actually monitor their movements with this and give warnings if for some reason they'd fallen down or they weren't moving or something like that they could use that and since it just generates stick figures rather than um, generating actual uh, pictures of the person that would maybe take care of the people that have concerns about privacy or something like that. So if you get a chance to check that out. And last, this is something I did not hear about, but I guess it's one of the biggest ride uh, uh, kind of things like a, a Lyft or an Uber or something like that, one of those uh, calling up dialer rides or whatever. And this is called Didi Chuxing, and this is uh, a Chinese outfit. And I guess uh, what they did was they actually... Um, uh, bought out, either bought out or somehow just expanded and uh, uh, absorbed Uber. They said, this is, while you might not have heard about it, DD is China's most popular ride healing service and in 2016 absorbed Uber China in a deal worth about $35 billion. So <clears throat> I'm guessing they just bought them out for China and what they have now is they have the necessary permits, I guess, to go down to uh, Melbourne, Australia and actually start doing some tests there and they said they're already recruiting local drivers. So uh, this DD Chuxing service could give Lyft and Uber a run for its money because they have also been granted a permit from the state of California to actually go in with driverless cars and test them out on public roads. So uh, nobody's heard about it before, at least I didn't hear about it. And maybe, you know, if you did, let me know in the comments below. But it looks like this uh, DD Chuxing may be the next uh, big thing in the United States. And uh, who knows, when you get three of them competing, Lyft and Uber and DD Chuxing, there's probably other more minor ones too that people will tell me about. But yeah, you get three of them competing and it's going to be good probably or better for the drivers because from what I've heard, especially of my friends and people that I watch on YouTube that have been driving for Uber, it's a hell of a lot of work for not a lot of money. So there's a lot of periods of time where you really put in a lot of hours and don't really get much return on your money. So maybe if uh, this DD Chuxing could get them a little bit more competitive and get a little bit more... Uh, offers of uh, better you know better mon monetary offers between the different services to try to get more drivers to to drive for them who knows what it uh, says so but the company says it'll be focusing on 2018 expansion efforts in australia latin america and japan australia's ride sharing market has filled up the past months with competition from taxify that's another one indian company ola and now dd right now if the dd's launch is melbourne only with no word yet on what other australian cities will get the service so anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody, and I will catch you, unless something major happens, the second Saturday in July.